Hello, welcome to Inastava. The title of our lesson today is Is this what you are saying? This is an English lesson for the third grade of high school. My name is Livia Pribanic and I will be the teacher in this lesson. As we will start with our activities shortly, please get ready for the lesson. Prepare a notebook and something to write with. Also, whenever you see the pause button within the lesson, please stop the lesson and do the task. Otherwise, you can stop the lesson at any point you need to. Are you ready? Let's get started with the first activity. At the beginning of our lesson today, let us reflect on the way we live. I chose this illustration because I think it represents our modern life. We are constantly surrounded by pieces of information. We are constantly connected to a network, be that network of people or network of sources of information. And these information keep coming and going, bouncing to and forth. The next illustration is also a great example of today's modern communication. We are all connected in a way, and there are numerous channels through which our messages travel and spread. Very often we are not even aware of how many people can receive a piece of news. It is a well-known fact that communication is pervaded in every facet of our lives. But still, we sometimes forget what it really means to communicate. What do you think? What does the word communication mean to you? How important is it to communicate? Here is your first task. Stop and think. Answer the previous question. What is communication to you? What are the important aspects of communication that you are aware of? In your notebook, create your mind map. Pause the lesson, think about communication and draw a mind map. If we could compare your mind maps now, I'm sure these are the words that would come up very often. Message, exchange, and this exchange can be one way or two way. Also, the word understanding is closely related to the term of communication. And finally, media or channel, because this is where the communication happens, right? But how many of you have written down the word listen? Your first task will be to answer the question, why is listening important? I'm not looking for an answer here, but I would like you to watch a video and make notes on two important aspects mentioned in the video. One are the techniques we use while listening, and the second is five exercises we can do to improve our listening. Here on the screen, you can find a QR code you can scan using your mobile phone, or you can click on the bit.ly link underneath this video lesson. The link will take you directly to the TED Talk. It is seven minutes long, and I think you will find many useful uh, tips to improve listening. So, Pause the video lesson, 
watch the video, and make notes. Remember, do not write down full sentences. While making notes, keywords or fragmented sentences are totally acceptable. Good luck! So far, we have established the importance of listening in communication. For your next chart, in step one, I would like you to draw a T-chart in your notebooks. There are two columns in this T-chart, good listening on the left side and bad listening on the right side. So copy the chart into your notebooks. Pause the lesson once you finish Come back. Now think about the video you have just watched and then try to analyze the activities you have in your everyday lives that include communication and listening, both techniques that we use while listening, but also uh, all the situations in which it is important to listen attentively. And then fill in the T-chart. Write your notes on both the examples of good listening and the examples of bad listening. What are these simple details that differentiate a good listener from a bad listener? Stop the lesson and complete the chart. Once you are finished, return to the lesson. Let us check together. I believe that you have also written some of these ideas into your T-chart. So for good listening, eye contact as the first example. Why? Because maintaining eye contact with the person you are talking to or the person you are listening to is very important. Smiling and nodding are two more examples which Give the speaker or the listener proof that you are actively engaged in this communication. Asking questions is extremely important when talking about attentive listening and active listening. And finally, asking for clarification. Why? Because this is an important moment when you as a listener seek for extra um, explanation, extra clarification, just to make sure that you understood the speaker correctly. Signs for bad listening would be looking away from the speaker. Also, looking at your watch or fidgeting while listening to a person is actually a sign that you are not really either interesting or not paying attention to what is being said. And finally, finishing somebody else's sentence is also a sign that you're trying to hurry him or her up, that you're not actually into the communication because you have already set your mind to what will happen next. I hope you agree with these notes and feel free to add them to your list in case they are different. So all the previous activities led us to what we will focus on now, and that is active listening. And first, I would like you to check your knowledge on active listening. How much do you know about active listening? There are four sentences on this slide. Read through them carefully and decide if they are true or false. Pause the lesson and write true or false next to each sentence, then come back and we will check it together. Sentence one, active listening is a skill. It is true. So active listening, as any other skill, can be taught and it can be improved. An active listener must nod when listening. That is not an obligation of an active listener. 
we are encouraged to nod if we want to show that we are really interested in what the speaker is saying, but it is not an absolute must. Sentence number three. People usually remember more than 50% of what they hear. This is false according to the TED video you have just seen. And finally, number four, active listening includes not only the meaning of words, but the complete message. And this is a true statement. Well done. We have just stated on the previous slide that active listening is a skill. It can be taught, it can be learned, and it can be improved. So let us do just that, improve our active listening skills. The QR code provided here and the bit.ly link underneath this video lesson will take you to an article where you will find many useful tricks on how to improve your active listening skills. Now pause the video lesson and read through the article. You will use both this article and the TED Talk from the first activity in this video lesson to do your final task. And your final task is to keep a listening journal. Keep a journal for a week. In this journal, describe your listening activities during the day. In addition, try to apply the active listening techniques and describe the situations in which you have done so. Feel free to add comments on changes. And then after a week, write a reflection essay. Think back and track the changes. Describe how you have improved as an active listener. Don't forget, small steps also count. To help you finish this task successfully, here is a simple checklist. Are there seven journal entries? Have you provided examples? Have you described the application of active listening techniques? And finally, have you written a reflection journal? If you can tick all of these boxes, then you have just completed the video lesson. I hope you have found the material useful in this video lesson. Thank you for being with us and until the next time, bye.